right, welcome. Welcome. Happy Sunday morning. So we have our opening scripture is Psalm 121, verses 1 through 2. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Pray with me. Dear God, you are the almighty maker of heaven and earth. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us here today. Help us to hear what is being said this morning and help it to change us to be more like you. Our opening hymn is uh, 757. Today, we all are called to be disciples of the Lord. Will you stand? It is good to be with you this morning, uh, those online and those here in the room. First Presbyterian Church of Wasilla, Alaska, is part of Yukon Presbytery. A presbytery is a group of churches, usually uh, around a geographic area, and Yukon Presbytery stretches from what would be south or east Anchorage all the way to Ukavik or Barrow, Alaska. Uh, over to um, New Wixit and then out over to um, uh, Ogonic Church in Wainwright. Then we also have a couple of churches on St. Lawrence Island. Um, and uh, there's about 20 congregations. Uh, eight or 10 of those are on the road system and about eight or 10 are off the road system. Uh, so that, that was a whole new category to get to know. I was part of Shenandoah Presbytery, which basically eight, eight, Interstate 81, the spine of Shenandoah Presbytery, and it goes from just barely into West Virginia into, you know, central, the Central Valley of Virginia. So 
we thought we had a huge presbytery. Sometimes you had to drive three hours to go from one end to the other. It was horrible. <laughs> so people around here learn a little different things. But we're gathering this week. We're doing it virtually. And so uh, the Presbytery has gathered this week to do business, and we've worshipped, and we've played a little bit, and we've uh, commissioned a pastor up in Delta Junction. We talk about business, and we're, we're just doing, we've, we've celebrated Kurt Carnes. Kurt Carnes has been our executive presbyter about 14, 15 years, and he's retiring. He's staying in the area. That'll be good for us. Uh, but he's uh, transitioning from kind of parish and pastoral ministry to working with uh, something called Internet, Intergenerational Arctic Ministries. I'll tell you more about that another day. But uh, Meg Brosty and Todd Brosty have attended this meeting. Bob Christensen's real active in Presbytery. Shirley Novak is real active in Presbytery. If you want to know more about what our Presbytery does, um, ask them. They know a lot about it. Um, it's a Presbytery primarily of small churches, and uh, some of those churches are struggling right now. Leadership development, um, strategic planning, all those kind of things are things that we talk about on a pretty regular basis in the Presbytery, just like we do here. Um, we're going to sing some more. You guys are welcome to stand. Following our service today, there will be another service that will be broadcast kind of on our screen via Facebook, and that's going to be a joint service of UConn Presbytery. So if you want to stick around and, and be a part of that service, you are welcome to do that. That will happen right here in the sanctuary a little before 11 and, you know, kind of going 11 to noon. Uh, The same great light that broke the dark, the same great peace that calmed the sea, hallelujah, is living in me. The same great love that gives us breath, the same great power that conquered death, hallelujah, is flowing through me. 
this next song, um, we're going to do a little bit as a canon or a round. So we'll all sing kind of the first two things or the first two verses, if you, if you have that. You are my strength, and then the Jesus, Lamb of God part. Then you folks over here are going to stay with the Jesus, Lamb of God part. Okay? So you'll just keep on singing that. And you guys over here, small but mighty, <laughs> you're going to follow me, and we're going to do the second verse while they're doing the Jesus, Lamb of God part. Now, the trick to singing this kind of song is you've got to sing loud enough to be heard, and soft enough to hear everybody else. Yeah, right? <laughs> Loud enough to be heard, but soft enough so that you're hearing the other part too. A lesson for life. <laughs> okay. my strength prayer requests today, this morning? Any praises or prayer requests? Yeah. My mom fell on Thursday down in Florida and broke her um, kneecap and her nose, and so she's going to have a long, long time. She can't move her leg at all. So. Oh, prayers for recovery. Yeah. I have a praise about my brother David, who um, has had the trach removed, so this is the first time in about um, eight weeks that he has been um, completely free of any sort of respiratory assistance, and um, he's lost 50 pounds uh, while he has been hospitalized, and so this is all steps in the right direction, and so he'll be getting moved to a, uh, a, a different uh rehab the situation that will be not as specialized care. So this is all steps in the right direction. So a lot of answered prayer. Good. Is he up here in Alaska? No, he's in Portland, right? Portland, Portland Oregon. Yeah. Cool. Any Anybody else? In the back, yeah. Uh, continued prayers for Lois. Uh, she is feeling better, but prayers for total healing. Healing for Lois. Yeah, Megan? Prayers for my uncle. I just recently found out, I had, had, had been out of touch with him and found out that he um, 
had knee surgery, they got infected, and oh. spent 22 weeks trying to get rid of that infection. Finally got rid of it and just had another knee replacement. So prayers for <laughs> healing for him and yeah. his knee and recovery. Oh. Deborah's battling cancer, stage four. Yeah. Um, my friend, John Dolchek, a longtime friend, passed away this last Monday. I'd like prayers for his family. John passed in prayers for his family. Anybody else? Yeah. She just lost her dad and she has several other things really wrong. A lot going on Yeah. We have Maria back in church. Maria's back in church. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Uh, first, also, today is World Mental Health Day. So Today's World Mental Health Day. Yeah. And uh, Marty, who has terminal cancer, uh, it's uh, pretty rough. He's only 60 years old, and uh, just uh, wishing him uh, peace and yeah. all the help you can get. Terminal cancer, just peace as they transition. Yeah. Daughter in law was diagnosed with stage one cancer. She has surgery Tuesday week. And her prognosis looks really, really good. Good, good. Stage one cancer for daughter in law, but prognosis looks good. Good. Yeah. Praise that today is Beverly Woodall's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Beverly. And your son is home from Fairbanks to help celebrate. <laughs> Store that's right here, yeah. It's a dual purpose visit. Yeah, yes. <laughs> store the community. Well, if that's what it takes, right? <laughs> that's today? <laughs> Hopefully. Surprise! <laughs> Anything else? All right, please pray with me. Dear God, we just uh, we see you as we look around this season and the fall colors and the mountains, and we just praise you for showing yourself to us in all the different ways that you do, Lord, that um, we see you working and um, healing in, in the ways that you help us through sickness, and uh, we just praise you for Though even though bad things happen, Lord, that you use them for for your good, and just help us to see that, Lord. We um, we praise you that people are feeling better. Lois is uh, feeling better, and uh, the prognosis for some cancer is good, Lord. And we just praise you for that, Lord. Help us to see you in all these things, and we praise you for birthdays, and uh, that we here at church are all healthy enough to be here. So we praise you for that, God. Um, we confess, Lord, we confess that um, sometimes we do things we shouldn't, and sometimes we don't do things that we should. And God, help us, uh, help us to be better, to be more like you, and um, forgive us, forgive us when we are not like you, Lord, that we don't show your love. And uh, Lord, just help us to continue to grow every day. Thank you for the ways that you're working in our life. Thank you um, for all the healings and for being with us through passings and, and cancer and um, mental health, Lord. Thank you for guiding us through these things. Um, and thank you for our daily life, Lord, just in and out every day that you're with us. Um, we just ask that you do heal the people that were mentioned this morning with sickness and falls and cancer and um, mental health, Lord, the unseen sicknesses too, Lord. Just be with us, be with the doctors, be with family members, 
Give us strength, give them peace, and give them hope, Lord, that you are still there. God, um, thank you for this church. Thank you for the work that we can do that you allow us to do through you. Help us to hear this sermon today. Help it to change us and help us to go out into the world and, and be ambassadors for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been walking through the book of James here for oh, a little month, a little over a month, and we're kind of finishing it up today in the fifth chapter. This is some of his final thoughts, um, and you may remember that James started out addressing this to uh, Christians and the saints who are scattered around, uh, and uh, he finishes this chapter by reminding them or saying that you know, it's a really great thing if you bring someone back um, from death or from error. Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways covers a multitude of sins. So he's still thinking about that group of people, faithful folks who are spread out and who are scattered among the countries and the nations of that day. All the way through, this letter has been focused on what we do together. There's a lot of relationship here in the letter. And it's also just focused on how faith uh, works its way into deeds, how faith is expressed and how we behave with one another and how we behave in this world. It's focused on God's wisdom and God's character and, and compares that within the world's wisdom and the world's character. But he finishes with a bang here in the fifth chapter. I was telling somebody uh, earlier this week that uh, James is, has several of those. Uh, this is one of the last sermons that you would preach in a church sermons. And uh, the fifth chapter has one of those too if you want to go after the, the rich people. So that's how he starts, fifth chapter. Now listen. Again, it's one of those imperative, right? Half the letter is written in imperative language where he's telling us what to do. Listen, you rich people. Weep and wail all you want, but your wealth, and he uses three different words. He uses the, the word for grain, uses the word for garments, and then uses the word for gold that we translate as gold. And that's how they counted wealth. How much grain you had, how, many, how much clothing you had, and then gold, of course. And he says, all of it's going to go. None of it's going to last. Even the gold will be corrupted and, and corrode and go away. So don't trust it. Listen, weep and wail all you want, but your wealth is going to go away. And if you got it by corruption or by oppression, that's a big problem too. You will get your reward. He goes on and talks about patience. He talks about patience of a farmer. Um, again, in that area, you had early rain and you had late rain, and the farmer had to be patient because the early rain enabled you to put the seed in the ground, and the late rain is what brought the harvest in. <laughs> you needed both of them. And so you were patient for the first rain you planted, and then the second rain for the harvest. He uses the, uh, the image of a farmer for patience. He uses Job, the patience of Job's. He also talks about the prophet's how they suffered, and how they were patient. The reason is, is because the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. That's why we can be patient. Stop swearing, he says, and that's not really just about cussing. Oath-taking had kind of come to a, a fine art during that period of time. And if you made an oath taking the Lord's name, then you were expected to keep that oath. If you didn't use the Lord's name, it was... Eh, maybe. And so people were really, had gotten real refined about how to use the Lord's name or not use the Lord's name uh, when they made promises. And he's just saying, get rid of all that stuff. It's immoral. Just let your yes be yes, your no, no. Talks about Elijah being uh, an illustration of a righteous man in his prayer. 
And he talks about people wandering from the truth and being brought back. But the verses I want to focus on this morning just very briefly are, are verses 13 through 16. It talks about a singing, confessing, praying, and healing church. So I want to read those verses for you. This is chapter 5, just verses 13 through 16. If any one of you is in trouble, they should pray. If anyone is happy, let them sing songs of praise. If any one of you is sick, they should call the elders of the church and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If that person has sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Praying and singing and confessing and healing. Sounds like a church I want to go to. The foundation of all prayer, the foundation of any of these activities, assumes that God is at least two things. It assumes that God is powerful, that God can do something about your prayers. It also assumes that God is compassionate, that God cares, that God is, is loving. So those are great assumptions that, that stay behind and are foundational to this idea of praying, confessing, singing, being with one another in community. That God is powerful, God can do something and will act, and that God is loving and compassionate. Prayer is practiced by the ones in trouble or the ones who are sick, by the ones who are happy. Prayer is practiced in community. We pray to one another, we pray with one another. Prayer is with elders and with confession. Prayer is conversation and relationship with God and with each other. It is, it, and it affects our health, our physical health, our spiritual health, our place in the community. So, anyone in trouble? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but a little bit of you know, affirmation would be helpful. Anybody ever been in trouble? Okay. All right, all right, thank you. We got a few hands going. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Other places I'd say, you know, give me an amen. Pray. Pray. Prayer, we, we, call, it, we call it a means of grace. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's an avenue. It's a practice. It's a gift that God has given us, but also a practice that we can get better at by doing it. Prayer is original research. <laughs> it is our conversation with God. It is our way of, of learning the desires of God and the mind of God. And it is God's certainly way of speaking to us and, and calming us and encouraging us. And I would say as we pray, we need to do, we need to follow again James' instruction of listen really well, speak less than that and be angry even less than that anybody happy anybody ever been happy all right yeah good thank you we get to sing <laughs> and if you've learned anything from me over the years you know singing is praying twice right that's that's a quote singing is praying twice singing is prayer with melody anyone happy have them sing. Anyone sick? Anybody ever been sick? Most of us know somebody. Now, in the Presbyterian church, when you use the phrase, gather the elders together, it brings special meaning because Presbyterian, the word Presbyterian, it comes from the Greek word elder. Okay? We're governed by elders. It's actually what the word means. Um, and so we have elders that are elected in, in the congregation. And it is very appropriate to ask them to pray for you and even to gather and anoint with oil. We have done that. It's not something we do often, but it is, it's still a practice within the church. Now, in this day and age, it would have just been the elders. Um, I mean, they use the term elder for leadership. But uh, it would have been the, the folks in the church who had been there longer, had more experience, Give those folks, you know, their, their due and ask them to gather around and pray. Pray and sing and confess. 
keeping in mind the lessons of the book. The lessons of James are humbleness, listening more than you speak, seeking God's wisdom. Don't judge anybody because it's not your job. Be patient because there are trials and sufferings and even persecution that we will go through, and those can be redemptive in God's plan and in God's mercy. Plan to do and act on what you pray and sing and confess about. We are not just people of words. Words are important to us. Our liturgical words, what, you know, what Paul is doing for us is the work of the congregation, the work of the people. That's what liturgy is. But those words have foundations and meaning and should shape us and move us again, as Paula prayed a little earlier. Being righteous in the book of James means being aligned with God. And so we spend our energy in Christ. We, we seek God's will in our prayers, in our singing, in our confessing, even in our affirmation of our faith and our affirmation of God's faithfulness. Again, very simply, this is the path that we offer each other and, and others. To be a praying church, a church that's connected with God's desires, a church that's connected with God's uh, word and where God is leading and taking us. A church that is confessing our need for forgiveness. A church that is confessing our need for faith and for practice and for help. A church that also offers healing, healing in God's spirit, healing in prayers being offered for one another, healing in community that is loving and humble and service and a servant to one another. Now, there's nothing new about that. Church has been doing that for a long, long time. But it is still our lane. <laughs> It is still what God is calling us to do and be. It was, it's what James was calling that group that was gathered in Jerusalem, but also that group that was spread throughout the world. And we're called to do those very same things here. We can pray. We can sing. We can confess with one another. We can be healing to this community and to one another. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, the, the saint, the apostle, James, and his ability to, to be in our face, but also to remind us of God's grace and God's mercy. He wants us to live a life in God's wisdom. May we be open to that leading. May we be open to that correction. May we be open to that mercy and shaping of our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Invite Paula back up. Let's do... Um a little prayer of thanksgiving, and then we're going to have a time of meditation. Elaine's going to play, and you can just think about what was said. So pray with me. Dear God, thank you um, that we could be here. Thank you for everybody that's here, and thank you for James and his, his words to us. Help us to pray more this week. Help us to sing more this week. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the answers that you're going to show this week, too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As an affirmation of our faith and a response to the sermon, uh, let's recite the Apostles' Creed together. Let's stand while we do.
Everybody stand. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Join us in hymn 761, called as partners. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and he be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Benediction is uh, hymn number 696. She's going to play through it once and then we'll sing.
service is now concluded. Our service to the world in the name of Christ now begins.